thank you for joining us. Just a reminder of who we are and what we do. A leading professional services consultancy with multiple service lines across two divisions. We have our business recovery and financial advisory services division, which is about 70% of our activities, covering corporate and personal insolvency, corporate finance and financial advisory. And we have our property advisory and transactional services division, being the balance of the business, covering valuations, transactional services, property consultancy planning and management. Our business model is to have many offices across the country. With over a 1,000 colleagues, our senior people are qualified as accountants and or licensed insolvency practitioners, chartered surveyors and lawyers. And over the last four years, we've enjoyed a cumulative average growth rate in adjusted earnings per share of 23%. Some highlights of our half year results, strong first half performance and confidence in full year outlook, double digit revenue and profit growth in both divisions, building on consistent track record of growth, that 23% I've mentioned, continuing growth in business recovery and financial advisory, maintaining our market leading position, by volume, increased number and value of insolvency appointments in the period, and our complementary advisory services have performed well. The property advisory and transactional services division has performed well with resilient income streams enabling that strong performance and growth from organic initiatives and acquisitions. And our dividend increase builds on the 10% compound annual growth since 2017, and that's after allowing for retaining funds for organic and acquired growth. I'll now pass over to Nick to go through the financial detail. Great. Thank you, Rick. Good morning, everyone. we we'll start with the financial highlights on slide five. Over the last six months, we've seen double digit growth in both of our divisions. At a group level, that's resulted in revenue growth of 12%, which has come equally from acquisitions and organic growth and a 13% increase in both adjusted pre-tax profits and earnings per share. So adjusted profit before tax of 9 million, up from 8 million last year, and EPS of 4.4p from 3.9p. Interim dividend up by 9% to 1.2p, and net debt at the end of October of 2.4 million is after making 7.4 million of acquisition payments in the six months. If we look at performance by operating segment, starting with business recovery and financial advisory, where we've seen revenue growth of 10% in total, 7% organic, which we're very pleased with, and 3% coming from the acquisition we completed in the year. We've seen an increase in both the number and value of insolvency appointments over the six months compared to the prior period. And that's come from liquidations, which we've previously been reporting, but also encouragingly from higher value administrations. And that increase in appointments has driven the organic increase in revenue growth and also a 15% increase in our order book over the six months. The order book now standing at 33.9 million up from 29 and a half at the start of the year. And that increase in order book gives us confidence as we look forwards that we've got a good book of work, which will continue to drive growth in this division. Within advisory services, they have performed well. Mantra Capital, the acquisition which completed towards the end of July 22, has performed in line with expectations. The integration is proceeding well. And our corporate finance team had a continuing successful six months where they completed buy side, sell side and fundraising projects. And operating margins in the division were 25.2% compared to 25.1% in the comparative six month period. Moving to property advisory and transactional services, where resilient income streams in the division enabled strong performance in a challenging economic environment. Revenue growth in this division, 13% coming from acquisitions. That's both the current year acquisition and the full year impact of the two deals we did last year. 5% organic growth, giving 18% revenue growth overall. The Budworth Hardcastle team, that joined the group in June, performed in line with expectations. Again, integration is going well. We've seen continuing organic growth in our consultancy services and transactional volumes were robust in spite of the obvious economic headwinds that we've faced over the course of the period. Operating margins of 17.4% compared to 17.6% in the comparatives. 
Shared and central costs, the 10% increase is principally due to the investment in our IT and HR capability we've made over the course of the last six months, but they are broadly unchanged as a percentage of revenue and represent 6.8% of revenue compared to 6.9% last year. We have maintained our robust financial position, looking at a bit of detail at the cash flow over the six months, adjusted EBITDA of 11.9 up from 11.1 last year. The working capital increase of 4.8 compares to an increase of three and a half in the comparatives. That's coming from seasonal payments. That's principally annual bonuses of 1.4, which would expect to reverse over the course of H2. And the debtors and work in progress increase of 3.4 is having maintained our lockup days from the year end position. Operating cash of 7.1. The accelerated tax payment we guided at the end of the year, that will be two million for the full year. And that means that by year end, April 23, we will no longer have a corporation tax creditor on the balance sheet. So we're moving to a position where we'll have paid all tax on account over the course of the year. Other payments, that's the underlying tax rate. So six month worth of tax payments, interest, capex and lease payments are in line with the comparative period at 4.3. From our free cash flow of 1.8 million, we have paid dividends of 1.7. Acquisition payments of 7.4 comprise 5.2 million for the two acquisitions we did this year. Uh, contingent prior year payments of 1.9 and acquisition costs of 0.3. And having made those acquisition payments, as I had said, net debt at the end of October is uh, 2.4 million from a net cash position at the start of the year. We've got significant headroom in our facilities, which run through till August 2024. And those facilities is a 25 million uh, RCF and a 5 million acquisition line. Our full year outlook, we are confident of delivering market expectations for the full year. Within business recovery, as I said, we've seen increased activity levels in our largest service line. That's been seen through the increase in the order book, which supports activity moving forwards. We are seeing a higher level of inquiries and increasing economic headwinds, which are giving some significant challenges for UK corporates. And we're confident of delivering growth through the second half of this year and thereafter. Within financial advisory, we've got an encouraging pipeline of engagements, which gives us confidence for H2 performance. And within property services, our expectations are unchanged despite the challenging economic environment and our division benefits from having resilient income streams. We're seeing a continuing flow of new instructions and we continue to develop our mix of services. Overall, we are confident of delivering market expectations for the full year following the half one performance that will extend our strong financial track record of growth and we will give an update on Q3 trading in late February next year. I'll now hand back to Rick to talk through the strategic and operating review. Thank you, Nick. Uh, continued momentum in recovery and restructuring. We maintained and built upon our market leading insolvency practice with a 14% share of the market overall, and particularly pleasing a 10% share of the administration's market which now ranks as second nationally by volume, and that's up from 6% in 2019, so a material increase in that mid-market activity. We now have 92 appointment takers compared with 71 in 2020. We're well positioned to deliver further growth with the benefits of our market position and national office network, giving us the capacity to take on more cases. Our expanded London office and offshore practice increase that mid-market presence, and we're already seeing the benefit of that in terms of the number of administration appointments we've received. Increased number and value of appointments, driving growth in revenue and order book, and that order book, which Nick mentioned, places us particularly well for the second half and moving into next year. In terms of higher profile appointments during the period, we've had Worcester Rugby Club, Avonside Group, the UK's largest routing contractor, Silver Bond Enterprises, casino operator, and Jehu Group, which is a leading construction company. They're all mid-market appointments, and the major benefit of those appointments we'll see in the second half and beyond. We've advised on the first SME court-sanctioned restructuring plan, 
and were involved in an innovative scheme with one of the major banks to assist in the recovery of bounce back loans. So that's looking at cases where loans may have been used inappropriately and taken out by directors. And we're looking at getting recovery into the case, onto the bank and ultimately to save taxpayers money. If that proves to be um, an, an effective initiative, which um, undoubtedly will, there is significantly uh, more cases which can follow that and uh, that will become a bigger assignment for us. And overall, insolvency and defensive activities currently represent about 85% of divisional income. Just to look at the insolvency market, number of corporate insolvencies increased to over 20,000 in the 12 months of 30th of September 22. This reflects the fall away of the government support measures and the headwinds the economy is facing. That's 23% higher than comparable pre-pandemic periods, with almost 17,000 in 2019, and those relatively low figures in 2020 and 21, when the government support measures were in full force. The increase we've seen is largely on the liquidation side, so that's typically the smaller companies. Administration numbers, again, typically larger, more complex mid-market assignments, have begun to increase, but are still 35% below pre-pandemic levels. The current run rate of 1,000 per annum is significantly below the peak we saw in the last recession of 4,800. We're seeing an increase in our number of administrations as a function of our expanded London office and generally taking market share. Continued economic headwinds anticipate to drive higher activity levels. Higher interest rates and inflation expected to continue through next year. This contrasts with the benign environment during and following the last recession, where insolvency numbers peaked at 26,000 cases. And we have an increased insolvency practitioner capacity since the last recession. So if we're anticipating higher numbers than last time, and I think that's a distinct possibility, we have the capacity to deal with that additional work. Advisory services, finance broking, corporate finance complement the insolvency business. To remind you, finance broking is commercial and residential real estate and asset finance. So that's acquisitions finance, refinance and restructuring mandates for both physical bricks and mortar property, but also plant machinery, office equipment, etc. Roughly half of that activity is property related and the other half relates to uh, other items of, uh, of kit. Our corporate finance business concentrates on buy side, sell side and fundraising projects. And there's a strong synergy in the client base between all these activities and the insolvency practice. That's referrals from banks and referrals to banks on the funding side, working through our network of accountants and lawyers, introducing us to clients who have a need for either insolvency finance or asset funding, and going direct to corporates through our marketing team. Turning on to the acquisition of Mantra Capital in July of this year, it continues our development of BTG funding solutions, the finance broking business. It's a London finance and insurance brokerage focusing on commercial and residential real estate lending and finance. It complements well our MAF finance group acquisition made in May 21. MAF is much more regional and focused on non-property assets, whereas uh, Mantra is London-based and focused more on property assets. So the two complement each other very well. The combined teams have strong relationships with banks and specialist lenders, enabling cross-selling of debt advisory, restructuring, valuation and sales services. And we're already seeing work passing between the various divisions within our group in respect to those services. The results were in line with expectations in the period, and there are organic and acquisitive opportunities to continue the development of this service line. Springboard Corporate Finance, had a successful period across a range of products, including sell side, buy side, and refinance. We have a good pipeline of instructions across the advisory services, giving us confidence in the level of activity in H2. And we're able to pivot resource in a downturn to restructuring, debt advisory, and cash raising activities when needed. Moving on to the property division, professional services team perform well with a good level of instructions. So the sort of thing they're providing is valuation work. That's good book for lenders principally on new loans. So working for banks, when banks are making a new loan to a corporate customer, they will get a valuation of the property or the business, and we will help them with that. And also bad book, when somebody who's already lent on a property is concerned about the valuation and appoints us to do a revaluation, 
and that can often lead to transactional work if we are then instructed to sell the property. Activity levels in H1 predominantly weighted towards the good book advice. Consultancy services delivered a strong performance, largely defensive mix of services with broad client base, including the public sector, contracted and recurring income streams and long-term projects. The transactional teams had a robust performance in spite of the economic headwinds. It's a diversified mix of services with commercial property sales and lettings, online property auctions, business sale agency, and plant and machinery sales. Work across insolvency, defensive and pro-cyclical transactions. In terms of defensive insolvency, there's LPA restrictions coming direct from banks. In terms of our property auction, we're seeing lots coming in from distressed sales and accelerated sales. And the plant and machinery business is largely based on insolvency related work for both us and our competitors. Organic and acquisitive opportunities to continue to develop the division in terms of both new service lines and locations. And overall, in the property division, insolvency and defensive activities currently represent about 75% of divisional income. Moving on to the outlook, we're well positioned in a deteriorating economic environment. We're confident of delivering on market expectations in the current year. 80% of income is from insolvency and defensive activities. We have a strong balance sheet which underpins continued investment in successful organic and acquisitive growth strategy. We expect to continue building on our strong track record in the current year and beyond. And just finally on the next slide, to remind you of the growth record over the last five years, where we've seen significant growth in revenue, more than doubling, significant growth in adjusted earnings before tax, rising from 5.6 million to 17.8. That adjusted basic earnings per share figure of 23% growth from 4 million to 9 million over the period, and that increasing dividend again since 2017. So we're very pleased with the first half performance, and we're very confident of the second half and beyond. If there are any questions, then uh, please fire away. And our first question comes from Sam Dindle from Stiffle. Go ahead, Sam. Morning, darling. Morning, Sam. Thank you. Morning, guys. Hope good morning. Um, three questions from me, if I if I may. Um, firstly, on the order book, obviously very good progress there. Can you just remind us how quickly the order book typically drops through to revenue? I mean, does that give you good visibility uh, for the medium? Um, uh, secondly, on M and A, would we expect to see property as, as the focus near term? Can you speak about capability and, and locations, uh, potential growth there, or, or any colour on that? And then finally, on the administration's market, I think you clearly highlighted we're well below the 2008 peak. What do you think we need to see for those numbers to, to get somewhere towards that? Is it more the institutional members being more aggressive or the macro headwinds just taking a bit longer to, to hit corporates? Many thanks. Thanks, Sam. Well, dealing with all those questions in order, if, if Nick deals with number one and then I'll move on to number two and three. Okay, so yeah, in terms of the order book, I mean, what over the course of a year, about half of our income comes from the um, pre-1 cases, the things we've got on the books to start with, and half comes thereafter. I think what, what we would expect to see from the big cases that Rick uh, mentioned, some of those bigger administrations, we've probably only seen about 25 30% of the income from those come through in this year, and the lion's share of that value will come through in the second half. As, as those cases progress. So I think it, yeah, that that increase that we've seen of 15% positions is pretty well for seeing the, the second half uptick that, that we're expecting to see. In, in terms of M&A and property, um, we think there's lots of opportunity to grow the property division. We're currently just over 30 million turnover, but uh, a lot of that is focused geographically in the north. So while we do have a London office and some other offices outside the north of England, there is scope to uh, seriously increase the size of that presence and uh, that will be a focus for us over the over the coming years obviously we're cautious at the moment about uh, what we might take on and particularly in terms of things like agency which may well uh, have a relatively difficult 18 months but most of our business is not agency focused and it's likely as we grow that that will continue so we'll be focused on consultancy in our specialist services but cer certainly looking at the 
the next year or two and looking at the relative size of the various markets we operate in, then property is certainly something where we would see a lot of growth potential. And dealing with your, your third question in terms of administrations, it's not surprising that the small businesses are the first to go to the wall. They have less options in terms of raising finance, less in terms of retained profit, etc. The bigger businesses um, can survive longer because often they have, uh, in the first instance, opportunities to raise funds from either increased bank facilities, um, directors putting uh, funds into the business, directors stroke shareholders putting funds into the business, or in, in third-party funding, private equity, etc. Now, some of those routes will be successful, those businesses, but for, for others, it won't be. So it just naturally, as time goes by, interest rates remain high. Uh, banks are cautious on lending because of asset values. Um, demand that, um, that uh, is being um, uh, faced by these businesses in terms of, uh, of customer demand will be uh, subdued. Uh, we will undoubtedly see administration numbers increasing. And we've got a question from Gavin Laidlaw from Stockwatch, who's asked, how meaningful might the bounce back business be for the PLC? And what's your fee structure? Were you part of a trial and how successful was it? Um, well, we are part of a trial and it's uh, early days. So it's, it's ongoing. Uh, initial indications are that we are identifying assets which should come back into those cases. So the next stage is then pursuing those assets. In terms of how significant it, it could be, um, the focus, of course, is on small cases, typically with bounce-back loans. So um, relatively high volume is the potential. In terms of value, it, it could be material to us, but it's not going to be transformational. And in terms of fee structures, we'd be looking at charging on a time basis, um, typically on smaller liquidations, Etc. That, uh, that the realizations are relatively limited, so often they can be effectively a fixed fee. But uh, certainly, it, in terms of, of initially, we charge time to uh, to the clock on those cases, just like we do on any other insolvency. And um, we've got a question from Justin Bates from Canaccord. Just a very quick one. Do you think there is, or if you can put a number on it, um, if there is capacity within your own business and indeed the industry to deal with the expected uptake in, in work over the next two to three years? And, and if there is the capacity, just wondering what sort of level of capacity you're running at today, if you give some sort of indication, if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, in terms of our own capacity, um, we we always carry additional capacity because uh, work can come in waves. So insolvency practitioners are used to having uh, in periods of intense work. So we've got up to 20% capacity to deal with um, work in the short term. Um, beyond that, then we would have to, to recruit, uh, but recruit at, uh, at the lower level in the pyramid of, uh, of teams that work on these cases. We've got lots of capacity at the senior level. We now have over 90 insolvency practitioners uh, compared with the last recession where we had just over 50. Uh, and the sort of uh, level of fees they're managing at the moment is probably something like 80% of what they were managing um, back in 2010. So there's capacity within the senior people to handle more work and the recruitment into the teams will be very much at the bottom end of the pyramid. Uh, junior people who can process work uh, quickly and efficiently. And I suspect that within the profession, certainly the larger firms, it's a similar story. Just as a follow on to that, do you, uh, what's your observation regarding um, inflation with respect to the fees within the industry as well? Are that, has that been accounted for yet? Well, in terms of charge out rates, then uh, we've reviewed our charge out rates, which is the first time we've done it in a while. Um, and we're hopeful, on certainly on larger cases, that uh, that, that increased charge-out rate can be recovered. On smaller cases, it's more challenging. And on smaller cases, our focus is very much on the efficiency of dealing with those cases and using technology where we can to reduce the, uh, the human input while retaining the quality of the work we do and making sure that we're complying with all our statutory liability in terms of, uh, of, of doing work on those cases. So, you know, we're, we're hopeful that overall we can maintain or improve margins over the course of the next year or two. 
And that's the end of questions. Rick, do you have any closing remarks? I would just like to thank everybody for joining us today. Just to reiterate that we are very pleased with the performance so far in the year and confident of the rest of the year. And uh, we're looking forward to speaking to you again in six months' time. And in the meantime, have a lovely Christmas and New Year.